Hello everyone, I've decided to do another video, I had an idea in my head and I thought I'd done it and I've not, I didn't think I've seen it done anywhere else yet but I may be wrong but it just popped into my head and I thought I might as well do that because um, it's something so you know a bit more about the type of films that I like, some of my favourite films so I thought I'd do two separate videos, I'd do one today and one next week so this first video is top 20 films that I own on Blu-ray and 4K. There are only two 4Ks I believe in this. And then some point next week I'll do top 20 that I wish I had on Blu-ray or 4K. But um, yeah, I'm going to go. I, this video may go on for a bit because I'm going to explain. I have to justify why each of these films have reached my top 20. But I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I hope you like what I have to say about each of these titles. Um, not all of these may be films that you enjoy or are in your top 20 of anything. But for me, they are special. I could watch them again and again. And um, they are top tier for me. There is only one title from the last 10 years. Because a lot of my favourite films are 80s and 90s films. Which is why there is only one new film, and the new film is actually only a year old. Um, so, yeah, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, usually I would say to like and subscribe at the end of the video, but I'm going to change it up and I'm going to do it now. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and turn the notification bell on if you want to know when I've got a new video out, because I don't put on scheduled, I just do a spur of the moment put them up there but um i was going to do a shout out as well and this time i will also be shouting out this person in my end of the month haul video because of something that he inspired me to go and do i'm not going to tell you exactly what but i will in that video but i want to give a shout out to alex pitt He's a great content creator on YouTube. Um, he's just announced that he's going to start doing more different types of content like movie reviews and stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what he does with that. Um, but yeah, he's very good. Go and give him a subscribe. Um, he's got good um, input. He's um, very knowledgeable. And um, yeah, he's just a good guy. So anyway, I don't want to ramble on anymore because I'll be talking about each of these for a while. Hopefully this doesn't go on for too long. But um, yeah, so let's get in. So let's start with, and this video, by the way, will be not be edited. So because I still haven't worked out how to edit properly. And my videos aren't the type that need editing specifically. Because they're very casual, laid back, not professional at all. Um, I just like to get my ideas out. But anyway, I'll stop rambling on. And my number 20 is The Goonies. Um, you may wonder why this is so high up in the 20s. I own a lot of films and with the majority, I'd say about 70% of films that I absolutely love because I'll only buy films if I really like them. I do buy some blind buys, but most of those blind buys have actually worked out quite well. In fact, one of them is in my top three of all time films, not just that I own in my collection, just of all time. And that was just a random buy that I thought I'd give it a go. But anyway, The Goonies, a classic 80s film. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is definitely a must watch, but most people have seen this by now. Um, Steven Spielberg produced this. Obviously you have Richard Donner, director of the Lethal Weapon films, directed this. Um, about a group of kids that go treasure hunting basically. Treasure and it's like an adventure film and they're getting chased by like a, what they're called the Fratelli gang um but uh yeah if you haven't seen it i won't go into any more details but they, it's basically just a treasure hunt movie with kids from the 80s i believe this is 85 yeah 85 so yeah that is the goonies next up at number 19 is rain over me so i checked this out for the first time 2019 just over a year ago, so it was about December 2019, and I watched it again last year, around the same time. But um, this is probably, for me, 
Adam Sandler's best performance, and not a lot of people talk about his performance in this. And not, I, I don't know whether it's because not a lot of people are aware of this, but it's a very, very well done film. And it's also got, as you can see on the front cover, Don Cheadle, known as War Machine in the MCU. Um, also has Jada Pinkett Smith and Liv Tyler in a spat of man, and his basically entire family died in 9 11 whilst they were on one of the planes. And he's just very depressed. And this was his friend that he went to dental school with. And he basically helps him recover. And um, they become friends again. Because it was like a lost friendship. It's a very good film. Enjoyable. It's not um, boring or anything. It's just a nice watch. Well, to me it is anyway. But as I said, every film on this list you may not like. But I do. Next up, in the number 19 spot, is a film from Ron Howard from 1990, and it is Backdraft. I believe it is 1990, I don't want to get that wrong, I'm pretty sure it is. 1991, one year out. But Backdraft, yeah, I watched this for the first time last year. Um, all I knew was it was something to do with firefighters. But this, I know there isn't very many firefighter films, so I can't really say this is the best firefighter film. But it's a very, very good film. The cast is brilliant. And the special effects, well, they were nominated for an Academy Award. So they were obviously ahead of their time. And again, like most of the films that I have on this list, this doesn't get talked about much nowadays. But it is a good film. Um, if you like... These sorts of films, I wouldn't call it a disaster film as such, it's about a group of firefighters from a firehouse, and um, two brothers specifically, um, but it's a very well done film, and um, there's not much else I can say about it, I really enjoy it, I just like the um, connection between the two brothers, and um, yeah, that is why it's at my number 18 spot. Next up is the only film that um, is new on my list, and that is Little Women, and this was another blind buy actually, I bought this, um, can't remember who, where I bought it from, it was somewhere off of eBay, back in July, August, and I thought, I never went to the cinema, because I thought, I wasn't really that bothered, it's Little Women, it's about a group of women, girls rather, growing up, coming of age, and I thought, don't think it's going to be my sort of thing, but I thought it was cheap enough. I thought I might as well buy it and give it a go and see if I like it. And I was really, really surprised. It turned out to actually be my favorite film of 2019, even though I didn't watch it in 2019. And the reason being is it's just a feel good family film. There's um nothing you can say that's really particularly bad about it. Um, there's no villains in it. Um. There is parts of it that are sad, but you have to have balance in films like this because you can't all be happy because then uh, the film wouldn't work well because there would be no, um, forgetting of the words, I've forgotten the word but I won't, so if it comes to me I'll say it, but um, yeah, it's very, very good film if you haven't seen it and you may think, oh, that's not my type of film. But unless you give it a go, you won't know, because I didn't know. I thought it wasn't my type of film. I thought it was going to be a very girly film. But it's not. It's very interesting. And having not seen any of the other adaptations, or having read not having read the book, um, it was very enjoyable, which is why it is at my number 17. And at number 16 is... Robert Zemeckis's, not my only Robert Zemeckis title in here, um, but if you, I don't know if I've mentioned my favourite films before, but if you know it is my favourite film of all time is other film, but this is Contact, and this to me is the best, I don't know if you can call it an alien film, because you don't really see it, you do at the end, but not really, or do you, but it's... A very well done film, very well made film. Um, it can be a bit confusing and it's a bit convoluted, the plot. But at the end of the day, it's about, well, as the title says, contact, first date, contact with aliens, the humans. Um, 
And it's just, I thought it was an interesting and very well done film. And it's, again, I, I know I'm repeating myself, it's another film that you don't really hear much about nowadays, but it is a well done film. I'm going to speed up now because I realised I've not got through many and we're already 10 minutes in. So I'm just going to go over very quickly from now on because I don't really want this video to go any longer than it needs to. Next up, my favourite western, Wyatt Earp. Uh, Kevin Costner, one of my favourite actors. Again, this isn't the only Kevin Costner title in this top 20 video. But um, yeah, I know it's very long. It's three hours, but it flew by for me when I first watched it. Um... I just like the characters, um, specifically Wyatt Earp, obviously, and um, obviously Doc Holliday, played by Dennis Quaid, um, and, his, and Wyatt Earp's father, played by Gene Hackman. Um, but it's very, very good Western. Um, if you've not seen this, um, I would recommend it. I know it's long, but if you're into Westerns, this is definitely one that you need to watch. And if you like Kevin Costner, again, it's one you need to watch. So that's White Earp. I believe that is 16, 15, 15, I think. Anyway, next up is The American President. Now, this is Michael Douglas and Annette Benning, And it's a romance story about a president. I don't want to go into too much detail. She plays, um, like, a lobbyist. So, um... Like, like she um, helps the president deal with certain things she's brought in to help. I can't exactly remember what exactly, but it is a good film. The performances are good. Um, it may not be for everyone, I'll say that. It was written by Aaron Sorkin, who did the recent trailer to Chicago 7, and he also did The Social Network. Um, it may not be for everyone, because some people may find it boring, but I enjoyed it mainly because of I um, like love stories and this was a good love story and um, the acting was brilliant so that is why this is at my number 14 no hang on I'm wrong or am I no I'm not going to say which is which you'll work out if you're watching this back you'll know what number I'm on so I'm just going to go ahead next one's Armageddon to me the Best disaster film. I know it's cheesy, but it is the best disaster film ever made. Uh, Bruce Willis, Liv Tyler, Ben Affleck. Um, you've also got Billy Bob Thornton, Owen Wilson, Steve Buscemi. Loads of people in it. And it is just a good film. Um, end of the world. They've got to go up and destroy Meteor. The same year that this came out, you also had Deep Impact, which I watched for the first time last year, but wasn't as impressed. Didn't like it. Didn't connect as much with it as this. Um, this again is quite a long film, two two and a half hours. But um, if you like it, it doesn't. It shouldn't bother you. Um, it doesn't bother me. I could watch it. It doesn't feel like two and a half hours to me because I enjoy it so much. But um, yeah, that's Armageddon. Next up, my only foreign release I have in my collection, which I had got recently because I had it on DVD and really wanted to upgrade it, and that is Mannequin, um, Andrew McCarthy and Kim Cattrall. Um, this, I believe, came out no, it came out a few years after Police Academy because obviously you've got Kim Cattrall, she was in the original Police Academy and you've also got um, G.W. Bailey who plays the security guard. Can't remember his character's name. I should do because I do like Police Academy um, which is, you may see is on the next Top 20 I want. I don't know, I haven't decided that yet. But um, yeah, this is... Very cheesy. I had I did a review for this recently, and I said it is very cheesy, but it's enjoyable, and it's a classic eighties film um, with a great soundtrack. Um, so yeah, not much else I can say about that because it doesn't really need to be overly talked about. N not ni none. Neither does any of these titles really. Just need to explain why they're in my top twenty. Next up is The Last Samurai. Actually, I've just thought of something. I missed one of the, the one film out. I'll do a film. So I've messed this all up a bit. This wasn't too planned. As I said, I'm not professional. I understand if you don't like these types of videos, but at the moment I'm doing them like this until I get more people watching. But um, 
I would actually have to put The Goonies in my honourable mentions because there is another film, also Tom Cruise, because I was going to say this is my favourite Tom Cruise, but it's not. Um, that I forgot. I don't know where it is. I'll have to look for it. I won't show it in front of you, but I'll tell you in a bit. But anyway, waffling on again. The Last Samurai, the second best Tom Cruise performance, in my opinion. Um, it's a great war film. Um, it's just a brilliant film. The ending, the whole end battle, I was just gripped. I think it's about half an hour long, the end battle. But this film, again, it's long. But if you like the film, you wouldn't notice that it's that long. It doesn't drag. Um, there isn't loads of action in it. There is at the beginning and the end, but not really that much in the middle. There's bits, but um, it's very good. And... Um, it's about, obviously from the title, Samurai, and he plays, he helps. He was um, a captain in the army, but then, and against the um, samurais, but then he goes, he's basically taken, I'm pretty sure, by the samurai, and becomes one of them, and helps them free their land, because obviously the soldiers, the army, want to... Um, kill all the samurai because for some reason they don't like them but um very very good film next one actually is another tom cruise film so i wouldn't say this is my second favorite i'd still put the last samurai as my second favorite but this is more enjoyable to me of a film and that is recently picked up days of thunder on 4k um if you like racing films, this is definitely for you. Um, obviously, this was the first film that Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman did. They did three. Th all three I've seen, and all three I absolutely love for different reasons. Um, but yeah, this is a great film um, about racing. I'm not very good at reviewing, so I'm... As you probably can already tell from the rest of these, I've not really t talked about why I like them too much, just... Well, it's quite confusing. I'm not very well used to doing this, um, and I apologise for that. Um, but, again, I'm waffling on. Sorry I've said that too much as well in this video. I think my next video, I'm just going to go through. I'm not going to discuss them much. I'll just go through and quickly show you them in the next videos. But I'll get through this anyway. But yeah, Days of Thunder, brilliant Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Next up is Pretty Woman. Um, I believe it is my only Julia Roberts and Richard Gere title because they're both two of my favourite actors for different reasons. Um, watched this for the first time last year. Um, you may think again, Ooh, why would you want to watch that? Why would that be? It's just a classic, I think. And again... I really like love stories, and this is an interesting one, it's not a typical one, um, it's talked about a lot, um, and they, they did another one later called Runaway Bride, which I also watched, which is good, not as good as this, but it hasn't got a Blu-ray release, so I will not be talking about that, um, but yeah, Pretty Woman, good film. Next up is... Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, my second favourite Jim Carrey film, and my second favourite Kate Winslet film. They both have films in here that are in the top five, actually. Um, but we'll get onto that later. Yeah, this is just a really interesting concept. Um, I'm not going to tell and say anything about it in case you haven't seen it, but if you've seen other films like Being John Malkovich, which is also Charlie Kaufman, I'd recommend this. Um, it's interesting, and the reason I love this is because you haven't, you've never seen anything like this before, which is probably why most of my films, like I got another one, a few coming up, you you don't really before this, you you've never seen a film like this before, whereas some films you think, oh yeah, I've seen this before, yeah, this again, but this you've never seen anything like this before, and it's just a very interesting story, and it's very well done. Next up is The Blues Brothers. Um, this is obviously 
what John Belushi was will be remembered for the most because this is his biggest thing that he did. Unfortunately, I don't think he did anything beyond this. I mean, he did, I think, two more films, um, but nothing like this. Um, and it's sad, really, because I would have liked to see a proper Blues... I know they did... There was There is a Blues Brothers sequel, but it's not great because you haven't got the chemistry between these two. And it's just, it, this is just a fantastic, fantastic film. Probably my... Well, second favourite, because my favourite comedy is coming up soon. But, um, yeah, it's just good, um, enjoyable. Um, it's actually last year, which is when I bought this and watched it for the first time. 40 years. Cool. It's hard to believe it's actually 40 years old. I mean, thinking Monsters, Inc. this year. Not It's not in here, in this list. But Monsters, Inc. is 20 years old this year. That makes me feel old, although I'm not that old. Um, but yeah, 20 years, Monsters Inc. And The Lord of the Rings. It's just like, wow. Um, anyway, next up is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It's debatable whether this is my favourite Kevin Costner film, because you've also got another one, which I will talk about on the next video, which I want. I have got it, but only on DVD, so that is why I'm not including it in this, because this is just Blu-rays and 4Ks, but Robin Hood, um, debatable whether it's my favourite, Kevin Costner, it switches between this and the other one, um, but yeah, definitely my favourite Robin Hood film, um, it's just epic, that's the word I would use to describe it, epic, and if you haven't seen any Robin Hood films, I'd recommend only watching this one, because this is the only one worth watching. I have got the new one, but only because it was cheap. And it's enjoyable, but this is, to me, the only one worth watching. Even, um, what well, and the, uh, obviously the original Disney animated one, that's good as well. But um, I didn't care much for the Russell Crowe Ridley Scott one. I thought it was quite slow, but this is just an adve epic adventure film. Um, that's just very good. Right, now we're into my, well, no, wait, I'll do six, which is the one that I forgot, which I'm not going to get up and show you now, but I'll just tell you, it's Jerry Maguire. Um, I don't know why I like it so much. I think it's definitely Tom Cruise's best performance. I've seen it twice now, um, and it gets better with each watch. Um, again, it's probably because there's a good love story in it, and... That's why most of these films are on here, because I like when there are good love stories. That is the best part of some films for me. But, um, yeah, Jerry Maguire, good film, good acting. Um, so, yeah, not I'm not going to go on any more about that. I'm just going to get into my top five. So, number five is Groundhog Day. I watched this just before Christmas, and two days later I ordered it on 4K. I liked it that much, and as soon as I got it, I've watched it again. It's just a probably the most rewatchable film to me because you see something different every single time, and every single time you think, "Oh, that's coming now." Oh, I did. Or, "Oh, I didn't see that before." Or you pick up on something every time, and it's just. You may think because it's like a time loop film, um, it could be quite boring, but it's not because every time it's different and it's fresh and there wasn't anything I don't believe done like this before. There has been since, obviously lots of stuff. I watched a film, Boss Level, not too long ago. Um, I think I think it was in my last reviews, but if not, it'll be in an upcoming review. Um, but um, yeah. Bill Murray's great in this, um, and this is just a very good film to me. Number four is The Truman Show, my favourite Jim Carrey film. Um, again, like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You Before this, I had never seen anything like this before. Um, and it's the type of film that I really like. Um, it's just a great story, and it's just something that you wouldn't... It, you wouldn't want to happen. You think and you think, imagine if this was real, how 
what this man must be feeling because he doesn't know anything other than what is shown to him and it's not none of it is real so um yeah it's a very well done film and um that's why I set my number four blu-ray that I own number three Moulin Rouge um this is another blind buy that I bought about October November last year I'd heard a lot of good things about it before this I'd not seen or maybe this was just after I watched The Great Gatsby again, the Baz Luhrmann one, and I decided to get this, probably. But, um, yeah, this is just fantastic. Obviously, my favourite musical, but third favourite film of all... These next three are my top three favourite films of all time, which is obviously why I've already got them on Blu-ray. But, um, yeah, it's just... I think with these top three, it's because the love story works the best for me. And because the story is good, um, the music in this is good. I know most of it isn't original, but the way that they, the songs are sung in this film is good. And as much before, like I said, I'd never seen anything like this before I'd watched this. It was completely different to anything I'd seen before. And that is why I really love it. So that's why Moulin Rouge is my number three. Now my number two, Titanic. Obviously favourite Kate Winslet and DiCaprio film. Um, I think it's probably the reason I like it the most is because of the love story. And that is why, for me, the film doesn't drag. It is three hours, 15 minutes, I believe. But I when I watched this... Because this was a blind buy, obviously it's not really... You can't really say it's, oh, a blind buy is Titanic, so obviously everyone at some point has this in their collection. But um, I think when I was watching this, I got to about, um, I think it was about an hour and a half, I thought, is this this has only been on for about half hour, 45 minutes, but when I looked, it was an hour and a half, so that shows that it wasn't dragging and I was invested in the story. Um, it's just interesting because... Obviously, I knew about Titanic, but watching this just made it feel really real and raw. And um, it's just a brilliant, brilliant film. And my favourite film of all time and my top thing Blu-ray I have in my collection is Forrest Gump. Um, just pure perfection to me. I really connect with the story. Um... I think it's just about, because it's a very much, obviously, a character-driven story. And um, it's over the years how one man changes and changes into a different man. And um, obviously it shows that it's a good film because it won um, six Oscars. So, and um, the story is just, as I say, to me, brilliant story. But... Um, yeah, that is why it's my favourite film of all time and my top film that I own in my Blu-ray collection. So that's everything. Sorry that this video has been a bit bad, but um, as I say, this was a spur-of-the-moment decision to make this video because I have nothing to do. Um, and um, I thought it'd be something interesting. If it's not, you can tell me and I won't do the next part, but... Um, yeah, I've already said to give this like and subscribe and go look at Alex Pitt's channel. So I won't go in any further into that. Um, this has gone on for too long now. So um, I'm going to stop it and I'm just going to say thank you everyone that has chosen to watch this all the way through. I really do appreciate it. Um, if anyone wants to put their links to their channels or tell me to shout out their channels i'm happy to do so um i'd really like to help out other people um but yeah until next time bye